convolution is just about one of the most confusing things out there when learning about signals and systems. In fact, it's literally in the name. It's so convoluted. And if you were to Google what is convolution, you'd be met with perhaps some description of merging the shapes of two functions together, and then you'll see a wall of maths. Now, I'm not saying the maths is wrong. It's just not easy to understand intuitively. And that's the goal for today's video. Today, I'm going to try and explain through the use of an analogy, what is the intuition behind convolution? And my analogy involves fire, or well, at least smoke. So let's step outside to do this one. So imagine it's New Year's Eve or something, and there's just loads of fireworks going off. And our goal is to figure out at the end of the day, how much smoke is in the air because of all these fireworks. So to illustrate, let me use matchsticks as an example, because well, I can't set off any fireworks out here. So first, let's start by defining what I'm going to be calling the smoke function. And that is the function that describes when I set off a single firework, how much smoke is in the air because of that one firework. And we might imagine that it looks like some sort of exponential decay like this. So initially, we have the max amount of smoke in the air, but as time progresses and the smoke dissipates, well, the smoke in the air decreases. And the next function we're gonna be looking at is called the fireworks function. And that basically just says, how many fireworks are we setting off each minute? So if we're trying to figure out how much smoke is at the end of a certain time frame after, say, five minutes, well, it should make sense that we have to somehow cumulatively add up the amount of fireworks that we're setting off each minute combined with each firework's smoke function to figure out how much smoke is in the air at the end of five minutes. But how do we do this mathematically? Well, let's start by looking at this minute by minute. So at minute zero, let's just say that we are setting off one firework. So that means f of zero is equal to one. So just one firework at minute zero. So how much smoke is in the air at minute zero? Well, it should make sense that we just multiply f of zero, which is one, times the smoke function of zero. That gives us the amount of smoke at the start of minute zero. All right, so what about minute one then? Let's just say that f of one is equal to two. So at minute one, we're setting off not one, but two fireworks. So at minute one, we have two fireworks. Now, the amount of smoke at minute one should just be f of zero, the previous minute's fireworks, times s of one, because those previous fireworks have had one minute to dissipate, plus the newly created smoke, f of one times s of zero. All right, so now let's go on to minute two. How much smoke is there at minute two? Well, if you can notice the pattern, it should be just f of zero times s of two, plus f of one times s of one, plus f of two, the newly created smoke at minute two, times s of zero. And of course, we can extend this to any arbitrary time frame. So let's look at minute five, for example. At minute five, we have f of zero times s of five, that's how much smoke is left over from the first round of fireworks, plus f of one times s of four, plus f of two times s of three, plus f of three times s of two, plus f of four times s of one, and finally, plus the newly created smoke at minute five, which is f of five times s of zero. And this should make intuitive sense that the amount of smoke left over at the end of any arbitrary time frame is just the sum of these contributions from the newly created fireworks at each minute. So mathematically, what we've done is we have convolved these two functions. We have convolved the fireworks function f and the smoke function s. And to put this mathematically, well, it looks something like this. Of course, since fireworks are discrete events, we either set off a firework or we don't. Well, this is a discrete summation. But of course, we can extend this to a continuous function as well, such as maybe the voltage across the capacitor. But instead of a discrete summation, we turn this into a continuous integral over a certain time frame. And this is called the convolution integral. All it's doing is it's keeping track of the running contributions from the product of these two functions as time progresses. And this is over a time period t. You should note that the other variable here, tau, is just a dummy variable used for the integral. It's the equivalent of i in the discrete summation case. So I hope that fireworks analogy gives you some understanding as to what convolution really is. And the way I would personally describe it is when you convolve two functions, you're basically combining them in such a way that tracks their interaction throughout time. And well, if that fireworks example didn't quite stick with you, here's another one. When I'm talking to you right now, you don't just hear the sounds that I'm making right now. You're hearing a combination of those sounds as well as the previous sounds that I've made as they echo throughout the room and eventually make their way to the microphone. So in a sense, you're hearing the convolution of two functions. One function is a function that describes the sounds I'm making over time, 
and another function is one that describes how those sounds echo throughout the room and eventually hit the microphone. So my goal of this video really wasn't to dive into the mathematics behind convolution. In fact, there are loads of videos that already do that. But I don't feel like there are very many videos that explain the intuition behind what convolution is. And well, there's no use memorizing a bunch of formulas if you don't understand what they're doing. I mean, sure, you might be able to pass an exam, but you'll never be able to actually understand what they're doing and apply them in the real world. So I hope that was useful to you guys. And if you like videos like this, please do subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time.